Hello everybody, this is Stephen Holt with Precision Performance. This is going to be part two of our chain series about how to effectively use chains in weightlifting applications. I showed you guys in video one kind of the reason why we use chains and then in part two here I've already showed you how not to set the chain up. You definitely don't want to set the chain up the way I showed you before because not only do we look stupid but it kind of defies all the reasons of why we actually use the chain when you get into the science. So the correct way to use the chain, the first thing you need is this is a 3 8 chain. I, sorry I don't know exactly how long it is but if you shoot me an email I can let you know how long the length is. But we have a 3 8 chain so that's what we already start with. So you come over here and you can see this. This is a correct setup for myself. This is how the chain should always look. You'll notice I have a 3 8 chain. It goes into a bigger 5 8 chain. So I'm going to show you guys how I got to this point. So the first thing you need is a 3 8 chain. All you need is you have a clip, carabiner, whatever you want to call it, at one end of the 3 8 chain. Throw it over the bar, like so. Now here is where you get into the most important part of how to actually set the chain up. Is a lot of people will say when you set the chains up, you need to make sure that half the chain's on the floor and half the chain's off the ground. And that's somewhat correct. That's just kind of a way of partially doing it correct. Because what happens is, is everybody's strength curve is totally different. Everybody's range of motion is totally different for their exercise because their biomechanics are slightly different. Their limbs are different lengths. All people are in different shapes and sizes, so their range of motion is going to be different. So by putting half on the floor and then putting half off the floor, you're not making it specific to the individual and you're not making it specific to the lift. The way we make it specific to the individual is by being able to adjust this chain. And okay, that's part of the reason why the first way I showed you to do chains the wrong way doesn't work at all. So the way we adjust it for the person, is let's say they're squatting. What you have the person do is you have them unrack the bar, go out into a squat. And once they hit the bottom position, once they went through the full range of motion and they're at the very bottom of their squat, you would then clip the clip at whatever part on this chain puts this chain on the floor. So to me, for example, it's four. So I'd go one, two, three, four, up, and clip. That would represent this chain being on the floor in the bottom position of my squat. So we know that when I go to the bottom, whatever chain I now hook to this is going to be deloaded. Okay, that's the most important part of setting the chain up is that all the chain goes on the floor at the bottom of every person's lift. Now, if I have some guy that comes in here who's 6'4", <coughs> excuse me, and squats with my setup, it's not going to be specific to his range of motion. If I have a girl come in here who's 5'3", and squat with my chain setup, it's not going to accommodate her strength curve because it's not going to be specific to her range of motion. So forget all the stuff that says, we'll put half the chain on the floor and keep half in the air. No, you need to adjust it for the specific individual so that the, all the chain deloads at the bottom. So once you've measured it, you just throw it back. It hangs there. Now I'm going to go over here, and you'll see I got the 5 8 chain. Now this is the heavy 5 8 chain. This is a total of 5 feet. Each length is 8 centimeters long, like I explained in the first video. We go down 2 and a half feet down, and we clip it. The reason we clip it like so is so that we're able to have more chain coming on and off the floor. Because if I had it here, the incorrect way, like I showed you, you can't accommodate the strength curve that much because only a few links are coming on and off the floor at a time. Whereas by having two, now you've already at least doubled it up. So you'll come over to where you have already measured it for the specific person. You'll take the large clip that's hooked to the large chain and you'll clip it through. Now you'll notice, see how I can move this? I've clipped it through the actual chain. What you don't want to do, what I see a lot of the time, is you get people who will clip it through like one eyelet of the chain. And you don't want to do that because now if this eyelet can break if you were to put like five or six hundred pounds of chain on here. Right here, this just represents 20 pounds of chain. 
you can put up as much as you want to be able to accommodate a person's strength curve. I mean, some guys that squat and deadlift, they might need four, five, six hundred pounds of chain. So we never hook it through the eye lift. The other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to hook the big clip through the small clip. Reason being is like I explained in video one, whenever you're using a chain setup for overload eccentrics, the whole part of using the chains is to do the movement down and up, both eccentrically and concentrically, as fast as possible. Well, you start moving fast, and this can open and pop out, fall on the floor in the middle of your lift, and you end up having disaster. So whenever you clip the chain, you just clip it through once you've adjusted it to the user's height. For example, if I want to keep adding more chain, I just grab another one, put it through. And I can do that. I can put as much chain as I want on here. Like I said, I could have 300 pounds on this side and 300 pounds on the other side. Now this is going to represent how you're going to set up the chain for every single lift. You just will adjust the small chain to where the specific person's range of motion puts deload at the bottom of the lift. Now you'll notice on my setup over here, when I actually squat, I choose to use all five foot of chain. Okay? I'm the only guy that I know of right now that does it like this. Right now I can technically squat with this or this. And it's essentially the same thing, except for here, I'm just using more chain on the floor. The only reason I do that is I get a little bit more of a sway effect when I use this chain here, because there's only a few links on the floor, so I get more of a sway. But this and this is accommodating the exact same amount of weight. I happen to be an owner at the facility here, so I'm able to have lots and lots of chain. So I can go ahead and use the longer ones for squats, but most of you guys out there are going to have this setup. And I use this setup for every lift. It's just with squatting that I like to go ahead and use five foot of the chain long. So that is how we get to the starting position here. Now you'll notice I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate just a rep, and I'm going to go pretty slow for you guys just so that you can see. The things I want you to watch is my knees. Once my knee joint closes and I go to the bottom of the lift, you'll notice that all of this chain will go on the floor. And then as I come up, and my knee extends throughout the lift, I'll be pulling more links off the floor, hence accommodating my strength curve. And that would be how to set the chains up for a squat specific to my body. Now what you'll want to do is, like I explained in the first video, when you are trying to accommodate the strength curve and you're trying to improve maximal strength if you're a power lifter, if you're someone who's just trying to be able to squat more weight, then when you execute the lift, you just execute it with the same tempo, the same speed throughout the lift that you always normally would. When we're using chains to try and get acceleration, and increase speed, they're not going to work at all unless you do the movement as fast as possible. Reason uh, three, the overspeed eccentrics, and reason two, increasing acceleration, the chains only work for those two things if you do the eccentric portion as fast as possible. So I shouldn't see anybody squatting the chain and going down really slow and then telling me that they're using the chains to get faster because they won't work. What you have to do is try and squat so fast that your butt gets down in the bottom position before the chain can almost even get all the way down. And then you're going to try and reverse the weight. So while the chain's still trying to go down on the floor, you're going to try and push it back up. And then when the chain's starting to lift up, you want to try and beat the chain so that you're already there and you go back down. That's how we create overspeed eccentrics, and that's how we are able to use the chains to increase the acceleration of the lift. So if I'm just trying to become a faster athlete or get faster with bar speed to move more weight, then a lift would look like follows. And you 
you'll want to stop as soon as you feel that you're not beating the chain up and down and as soon as you feel like you're slowing down that's when you would stop that lift so once you have the chain set up right you need to make sure that you execute all the lifts as fast as possible both eccentrically and concentrically if you're trying to use the chains for over speed eccentrics or to increase your acceleration if you're trying to increase your muscle your muscle mass and we're using the chains for a longer time under tension you can still do a slow eccentric motion because what the chains do is they increase the time under tension by making the concentric portion longer just because it's accommodating the resistance so naturally you can't press it quite as fast if you're using it for an injury you're just going to want to adjust your speeds based upon working around the injury for stability you're usually going to want to do it fast just like when you're trying to increase eccentric overloading if you're just trying to use the chains to accommodate the strength curve to increase maximal strength to just get stronger then you're going to want to use a same lifting tempo that you would always use without the chains so now that we know how to properly set the chains up we know kind of how we should do the speeds i used an example of a squat here i'm going to go ahead and set up a few other lifts so that you guys can see some of the other ways to set up the chains for the other lifts once again we only use chains in extension movements where there's an ascending strength curve okay flexion movements which would be like a row a pull up a leg curl where you go from having an open joint to a closed joint a bicep curl you don't want to use chains on those movements i see guys all the time especially on youtube doing bent over rows with chains and it's a flexion movement so the chains actually slow you down and they allow you to not contract the muscle fully at full range of motion because you're there's a descending strength curve not an ascending so only use chains and extension movements where we press push squat deadlift joint goes from close to open so i'm going to set up some more extension lifts for you guys and show you guys how to do it